What's up to my freelancers and creatives? This is Nathan. And in this episode, we are going to dive into a mid-year review. So at the time of this recording, I'm halfway through the year and we're going to see how I did for my goal. Towards the beginning of the year, I released an episode that looked at 2017, everything that happened. And I compared that to what I wanted to do in 2018 and where I wanted to go. In that episode, I looked at certain things like, for example, in 2017, I didn't release that many YouTube videos and I didn't release that many podcast episodes, but on other end of the spectrum, things such as um, doing public speaking actually went well. So I really just dove into what I felt was the best in 2017, but also some things that I missed. I mentioned in 2017 that some online courses that I created did not go as best or as rightly planned as I had hoped. Not only that, but I didn't reach out to my audience as much as I should have. So my email was almost not existent to my mailing list. It was very minimal. And then going from there, YouTube, I mentioned I didn't put out that much content, but in 2018, I have a lot of momentum and some things are going well. So this is how I'm doing thus far. I had a couple goals for 2018 and uh, some of them I believe are all within reach and it is somewhat of a lot when I think about the work, but that's not the point. The point is you have to set a goal because a goal is really not a true goal until it's written down. So after you write down something, it becomes a reality and it's something you can look at and move towards and it becomes real. Not only were my goals written out, but there were also public knowledge. So everyone has the freedom and the opportunity to read what I said I was going to do. And I've created some public accountability to see those things through. So really quick, here were some of my goals. I wanted to reach a thousand subscribers on YouTube. So when I started the year, I didn't have that many subscribers. I think it was around 300 and yeah, about 300 subscribers and I wanted to get to a thousand subscribers on YouTube. I also, another goal I had was I wanted to build an Alexa skill. So I wanted to say something like, hi Alexa, and then Alexa hears me and goes from there and it does a certain function. I wanted to incorporate my brand and my business onto Alexa. Another goal that I had is I wanted to create an audiobook. I've written a book already and I am rewriting that, but I never made an audiobook for it. So that was something I definitely wanted to work on. Uh, I wanted to launch a section of my website called Traffic Talk. I wanted to um, also secure a sponsor for my very own podcast. So what you're listening to right now, I was looking for a sponsor and I wanted to fill out my full product spectrum. And I just did a video talking about all the pieces that go into a product spectrum. So let's dive into the first goal and see how I did. But in order to do that, we are going to have to go to the desktop and we're going to look at my YouTube specifically and glean some things there. So remember, this goal is about reaching a thousand subscribers. So right now we're here on my desktop. I have a window open and this is my YouTube page. And as you can see, um, I don't have a thousand subscribers yet. I have, 613 subscribers at the time of this recording. Now somebody may see that and say, I'm not really impressed. There are people on YouTube who have millions of subscribers. There are people who have, you know, 20 K 30 K a hundred thousand. So 600, what does that have to do with anything? But the one thing I can definitely say is it's not about the specific number. It's about the growth that has occurred. Not only that, but YouTube isn't the only place where people can listen to me and connect with me. I have a podcast, I'm on iTunes. So there's other places people have listened to me besides YouTube. I didn't put all my eggs in one basket as it pertains with YouTube, but let's look at some of the progress I made. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to a site called social blade, social blade. And really it is an analytics platform for you to look at certain social media and they try to make it straightforward. So right here, you can type anything from YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, but I am going to look at, uh, YouTube. So I'm going to type in my name, Nathan Alote. Not too many Nathan Alote is running around. So what comes up is this, this is me right here. And I am going to look at this specific channel. 
and it has my subscriber count, my most recent video, my grade, and some other stats I can look at. And here it's showing me how many views I get on a daily basis, if I had monetization turned on and all that. But what is important here for me is to click on future projections. And I clicked on future projections and looking at that, um, it's pretty clear. I will reach my goal because this is estimating when I will reach my goal. If I go to subscribers milestone, if I continue with the same pace that I'm at right here, it's straight up showing me that it's going to take me until about November to get to the point where I reach my specific goal of a thousand subscribers. So am I on point to hit it? I am, but I can also think of some new things to get more subscribers, you know, and reach that goal sooner. So I'm on track to reach that goal. And that is a great thing. A quick takeaway from this is to look at some things that I changed in my business. So um, I found this article and I'll paste it in the show notes as well as in the description from Brian Dean from backlinko.com. Uh, and he talks about how to rank YouTube videos and he talks about it from a search engine optimization standpoint because YouTube does act as the search engine. It's the second largest search engine in the world right now besides Google. So another Google owned property, YouTube ranks very highly as it pertains to finding results. So I literally read through this and made many of the changes and recommendations on my YouTube channel. And I had a lot of success. I started seeing more subscribers, more watch time and people generally being overall impressed with the content. Um, for example, uh, one thing that you'll see on your screen right now is uh, when you look at the old style of how I used to do my thumbnails, um, I used to talk about freelance jumpstart TV that was prominent. I would find some type of photo and then I'd put a uh, text overlaid with the photo with a little bit of background shading. You know, you see that consistent style on the left hand side for what you see on your screen right now. I kept some of those elements intact, but I moved to a new style, which is what you see on the right hand side, which is a lot of color gradients, you know, a lot of gradients shading from one color to another a lot of real life pictures that resonate specifically with the title of the episode. And I don't mention it's freelance jumpstart because that doesn't matter. I'm just referencing and centraling in on the topic itself. And I've got more click throughs and more watches on my videos by simplifying my thumbnail style. Another goal that has come to life is traffic talk. Um, I mentioned this, an episode I had called Big Changes that I wanted to do a show where I did Q&A, where you would ask questions and I would give you answers. That was the thought. And here you see on the screen, Traffic Talk. I made this section on my website and you can see I have quite a bit of episodes talking about Traffic Talk and I'm answering all these questions. This gives me a quick format to answer your questions, provide value while I'm stuck in traffic anyway. So this is a great way for me to interact with you all and that is going well people are responding well to traffic talk because now i can consistently put out content another cool thing about traffic talk is the fact that i can more regularly release multiple episodes a week so i have the main episode of freelance jumpstart and then i have a q a with traffic talk and the cool thing about this is i have already crossed the output of what I did in 2017. Now 2017, I kind of took a step back and wasn't releasing that much content, but I have already exceeded that. I've only been making content consistently for two and a half months, but I've already eclipsed where I was last year. So I still have a full six months to continually release content. And I'm just gonna continue to do that and even grow my audience even more because the more videos I release, a better opportunity I have to engage with my audience, talk about more relevant subjects, and it just grows. People say they tend to binge watch my channel on YouTube, and I'm only creating more content for them to absorb. So I'm at a good pace with this. I mentioned earlier, I wanted to create an Alexa skill, and I still wanna do this. I still have a desire to do this, 
but some things have changed a little bit. The first and foremost thing that is important as it relates to creating an Alexa skill is to first go through the process of putting something on Amazon. So whenever you are creating an Alexa skill, you have to host your files on Amazon, which makes perfect sense. But for this, I want to go through somewhat of a lower level process that will inform me better about creating an Alexa skill. So that means I'm going to create this audio book that I've been working on and I'm going to continually show you all the behind the scenes of how I'm doing that just so that you can learn how to create your own audio book or how you can maybe offer that as a service to clients. But I'm going to record the audio book, show you the behind the scenes and take the audio book and put it on Amazon for sale. They have a service called Audible and I want to get on that and sell that particular audiobook as well. And here's a quick secret. If you're on my mailing list, you'll actually get the audiobook free. So I want to put that on Audible and let it be open for sale and just see what happens with that because that'll help inform my process for creating an Alexa skill. As I was thinking about what it takes to create this audiobook and rereading the previous book that I wrote in the past, it really got me thinking and I had many ideas of what I wanted to do. Now I wanted to add these things to the book, but it really wasn't appropriate because there's so much difference in subject matter. They really need to be their own things. So as I've been thinking about the audiobook and planning it out and outlining it, I had ideas and now I am going to write more books. So as you can see on the screen, uh, there are three books that are coming out that I'm going to work on. So this is like an addition to some of the goals that I established. It went from creating an audiobook to now uh, I'm writing three books. They all probably won't get finished this year, but two of them more than likely will. Um, well, this is a goal setting episode. I can be a little more daring. They will get done. Two of them will get done for sure. Uh, one of them is the freelance jumpstart book. That's the audio book that I'm working on that will turn uh, into something that is of value to anybody who follows this or likes this podcast or my YouTube channel. If you do, that's going to be of heavily value to you. Going from there, I'm working on something called Good Pages. I have so many things that I've learned doing web design and digital marketing for different clients. I've learned so much and um, I also have even done some coaching and tell other people what to do specifically on how to craft a campaign and make it successful. But I see a lot of mistakes online. I see a lot of missed opportunities. I see a lot of things that could have been done differently that would have led to success based upon certain things that I've learned. So I'm going to take that knowledge and put it into something called Good Pages. And this is going to be awesome. I'm going to write with a little bit more relaxed attitude. I'm not going to be so uptight or professional. I'm going to be a little bit more relaxed and I'm going to critique certain pages, tell you how to make the perfect landing page, tell you how to make the perfect website um, from a practical sense. There'll be some code in the book, but it'll be really practical because I want people to understand the logic and the thought process and the rationale on why you do certain things online or on a website that leads to a certain result. So how to translate that. And then lastly, this is going to be a huge project, something called Don't Manage Me. I, there's so much I can say about this, but at its core, it's pretty much going to be this. I've had many different jobs, and though uh, I'm still young, uh, I've worked for a long time. I've been working ever since I was uh, 10 or 11 years old. I've been working or having a job of some sort, and I've learned so much during that time. But the one thing I've seen recently is managers are not really connecting with the next generation. That's millennials. That's also Generation Z. And some things are getting lost in translation. So I am going to be the translator. I'm going to translate if you want to lead a team, if you want to work with a team, if you want to move forward towards success, if you want to reduce turnover, this is going to be the guy you're going to want to get. There's some secret things going on with this. It's actually going to be so much bigger than a guide, but I can't really say everything right now, but I just wanted to put this out there on what I'm working on. So my goal of an audiobook expanded. Another one of my goals was to create a pricing course. So, and let's actually show you what I'm talking about or the logic that I had. So 
we're actually going to look at my YouTube analytics. So follow me to YouTube. So let's go to my desktop. Um, so on my desktop, we're on my channel. <laughs> While I'm recording this, I just got a new subscriber. Awesome. Let's go to Creator Studio. And once the Creator Studio loads, you know, you'll see that I have quite a bit of different videos. I'm going to go to analytics and under analytics, I am going to look at what has happened on my page lifetime. So the entirety that my page existed on YouTube, we're going to look at that. Now I'm going to scroll down. So it's going from 2013 all the way to 2018 and I'm scrolling down and you can see the top 10 videos that I have based on watch time. Watch time is one of the most valuable things on YouTube. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. But when we look at the top 10 videos, I'm just going to read some of them. The first and top video is pricing psychology. There's another one where I talk about how to live stream. That's number two. The third one is about creating a process. Are you a freelancer? Are you an entrepreneur? Uh, the fifth one again is about live streaming. Uh, the sixth one's about marketing. The seventh one is about pricing. One of the pricing talks I gave at a conference. The one after that again is about pricing. Then I talk about marketing and then another, the 10th video again is about pricing. So in the top 10 videos, literally four of them are about pricing. So this is how I tend to determine what I'm making next and see what's working and what's not working. Things like this. So since it is four out of the top 10 are about pricing, I am going to move forward with creating a pricing course, but I'm not going to rush to do this because there are already pricing courses that exist and I want my course to be very different. So I'm going to do more user research. I'm going to want to hear from you. I want to talk to you. How do you develop your prices? How do you come up with them? What questions do you have? Maybe you're charging something and you want to charge more. Maybe you have questions about how do you land a $10,000 client, a $20,000 client and a hundred thousand dollar client. How do you work with these people? How do you work with a fortune 500 company? Things like that. These are some things and some questions that I even have. So it's not even that I have all the answers and I'm giving them to you. I'll go find the people that are working with fortune 500 companies and bring them in and have a conversation and, um, dissect their process and then, you know, unload it to you. So really I am still going to move forward with that, but I am heavily in the user research phase. I literally have everything sketched out um, for the course. I have some of the modules, all the lessons, but that's on my research. I want to base everything off of what it is that you have to say. So just definitely stay tuned so I can connect with you on that. Or you can go to NathanLote.com hop on my email list and talk to me and tell me you want to hear about pricing. Cause that's one of the first emails you get. And yeah, you know, I'll take that and grow that and use you as one of the main sources of how I craft this course. Another goal I had was public speaking and I outlined this and public speaking has been slow this year, but it's still a goal for me. I have a conference coming up that I'm speaking at in July. Um, that's really literally um, days away. But so that's one thing I am speaking, but I also applied to other places. I applied for a conference in LA, um, Philadelphia, another one that I applied to in Seattle. So there's different places that I want to speak at and it's still a goal for me. It's still something I want to do. It's still something I want to explore and it does challenge me and force me to grow. So public speaking is definitely something I enjoy. And let's go to my desktop. I actually made a public speaker page. So I literally outline why I feel I could understand the conference planner and that I'll make things easier for them. And I have a little bit of a previews of my philosophies and my thoughts. And, you know, I tell them it's important. I even give them a preview of one of my conference talks and I talk about the subjects I cover, right? So I made a whole page and dedicated an entire page to speaking and all those things. So again, speaking is something I still want to do. I'm definitely want to do, and I'm still open and booking, but since we're halfway through the year, I definitely need to think about 2019 because many times when you want to speak at a conference, 
you know, you have to pitch or you have to present or, or give a brief description of some of the topics you want to cover and show your expertise. So since we're halfway through 2018, I really got to start getting on it for 2019. And one of the last goals I had was email. I wanted to connect with my audience more and I wanted to talk to them more and I did not want my newsletter to grow stagnant. And I can definitely say I have been emailing my list more regularly. Um, I don't want to bombard their inbox because many times, I know sometimes I feel like that. People just email me so many things and I reply and I never hear from them. That's not what I want to do on my email list. Um, I have replied to people. I've asked them to email me back and they've had, and we've established a dialogue, built a rapport and, you know, just building a relationship with different people online and serving them however I can. But I can't really do that with a 50,000, you know, person email list. So my list doesn't have to be that huge. I just want to focus on reaching those people that really need intentional guidance and give them the same things that I wish I had when I was starting out with freelancing. So go ahead and hop on that list. As I mentioned, you can go to NathanAlote.com. That's N-A-T-H-A-N-A-L-L-O-T-E-Y.com. Go there. One of the first things you'll see is the ability to subscribe. And, um, you know, we'll we can talk that way. Email me directly. We can just keep the conversation going. Thank you for taking the time to check out this episode. I greatly appreciate it. If you liked anything I had to say, give me a thumbs up. But if you're listening on the podcast, go ahead and give me a review. I read those reviews and use those to make this podcast better. Um, not only that, I'm excited. It's halfway through the year. There's many things I still want to do. Um, there's many goals I haven't done based upon what I previously defined. However, I'm making progress and I've even introduced new things and I've taken those new things and I'm still working on them as well. So if you're watching, keep hustling. We're halfway through the year. Check on your goals. Um, I'd love to hear what your goals are and how close you are to accomplishing them. If you need any help, if you need somebody to be a sounding board or anything like that, feel free to let me know because we're on this journey together and we can make sure to hold one another accountable to do those goals. Well, thank you once again, and I will catch you in the next episode. See ya.